Hey everyone, welcome back to Matt's Hub. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own Voronoi sphere, just like this one, using MeshLab. MeshLab is an extremely powerful mesh manipulation tool with tons, and I mean tons, of different features, a few of which we're going to be using today. If you've never heard of MeshLab before, I've got a link down in the description where you can download it. But let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import a sphere mesh into our workspace. So we can do that right in the software, just by selecting filters, create new mesh layer, and selecting sphere. So I'm going to keep the radius at 1 and set the subdivision level to 6. And this basically defines how many triangles we're going to have in the sphere mesh that it generates. So once I click apply, you can see it's created a sphere in the middle of our workspace for us. Now I can close out of that window. Now the next thing we want to do after creating our sphere is to generate some sample points. So to do that, I'm going to go to Filters, Sampling, and I'm going to select the Poisson Disk Sampling. Now this brings up another menu with a lot of different options. The main ones that we're focused on is Number of Samples, and we also want to tick this Exact Number of Samples box. So for the number of samples, in this case, I'm going to select 50. Now, depending on how dense you want your Voronoi mesh to be and uh, how detailed your model is, you can play around with different number of points. I've found for the kind of effect that I'm going for here, 50 samples is a good number. So I'm going to go with that. So once we've done that, we can just click apply and then close. And you might be able to see here what that's done is it's generated a new layer called Poisson Disk Samples and it's populated it with 50 points around the surface of our sphere. And in the output window down here, you can see applied filter Poisson disk sampling in 60 milliseconds, and it's created a new mesh of 50 points. So I'm going to bring back our sphere. And the next thing I'm going to do is another filter, this time under color, creation, and processing. And it's going to be the Voronoi vertex coloring filter. Hey, it's Future Matt here. I just wanted to interrupt myself and say at this step, right before you hit apply, it's very important that you have the sphere layer selected in your layers panel on the right, like you can see I do here. If you have your Poisson Disk Samples layer selected, the next steps aren't going to work properly and you'll get an error. So just make sure that's selected before you hit apply. This brings up another pop-up window, and our to be colored mesh is going to be our sphere, the vertex mesh is going to be our samples. And make sure you tick this back distance checkbox and then hit apply and close. Now what this has done is it's painted a, uh, a color pattern onto the sphere mesh. So if I hide the samples, you can see they're going, but these color effects are still on the mesh. Now not only does this paint a color, it also applies a variable uh, in MeshLab called quality, which is just a generic kind of variable that's associated with its color. So a uh, red face or vertice that we can see here is associated with a low quality. A blue face is associated with a high quality. And we're gonna use this to our advantage to only keep these red sections of the mesh. So how do we do that? First things first, select the sphere. We have to make sure that we've got the sphere selected because that's what we're gonna be working on. Next, go over to filters, selection, and select by vertex quality. Now this brings up another pop-up. I'm gonna tick the box so we've got the preview. Now for max quality, I want there to be no limit, so I'm gonna slide that all the way to the top. For minimum quality, I'm gonna bring this down so we've just got the red sections highlighted. I'm gonna chuck up a picture on the screen right now that shows you the different effect of how you set this minimum quality slider. So the, the higher that you have the minimum quality, the more rectangular your cross section, rectangular or ovular, your cross section is going to be when we've completed this whole process. Whereas if you, we bring it lower, it's going to be more circular and more tubular. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about in these pictures. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to click apply and close. Now this hasn't done anything, but it's selected those sections in the middle. And now using the tool in the top right here, delete the current set of selected vertices. Now we can get rid of everything except those red sections that we've got. Now obviously looking at this, there's two problems. One, we've got really jagged edges. And secondly, 
This is just a surface. It's not got any volume. So to solve that, firstly, let's smooth it out. So again, we can go filters, this time smoothing, and we're gonna use the Laplacian smooth option. Now tick the box for preview again, and here you can play around with a number of smoothing steps to get the desired effect that you want. So you can go anywhere from one to 200, whatever you want, and just play around with it and see how you like the look of it. So 50, as you can see, completely flattens out those jagged edges and we're starting to get these curves in our joins. If we go all the way up to 200, for example, we're getting more of a, a ball with holes in it kind of look rather than the Voronoi structure. So I'm gonna keep it at 50, I like the look of that, and then hit apply. So now that's all smoothed out, next we wanna add some volume to it. And to do that, we can go filters, remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction, and select uniform mesh resampling. Now as the tooltip says here, what this does is it creates a new mesh that is a resampled version of the current one. Now a few options that we have to check here. Number one is clean vertices, next multi-sample, and absolute distance. Now if you wanna know what these things do, there's a help button you can click here that gives you a pop out and explains everything, but I'm not gonna go into that for this video. Now the next option is precision, and this is gonna define, again, uh, just like that subdivision tool for the sphere, how many triangles we have in the mesh that we're creating. And in this case, the lower the number, the more triangles and the more detailed that mesh is gonna be. So if we keep it on two as it is right now, it's gonna generate the offset mesh really quickly, but it's gonna be quite low poly. I found I get good results with about 0.2 to 0.5. It can take a few seconds, but you get a much better result in the end. Now, next we can have a look at the offset. So under this percentage box, if we leave this at 50, it's gonna do no offset and we're not gonna get any mesh. Now, I found ver uh, values from 50 to 55 work really nicely. In this case, I'm gonna go with 53. So we can hit apply, wait a few seconds for it to process and then we'll have our offset mesh. Now it's finished processing, I can hit close on this menu and you can see here we've got a, a 3D model with volume of our Voronoi shell. So if I hide that offset mesh, you can see it's created exactly what it says, an offset of that as a solid body. So I'll zoom out a little bit and next we can do another Laplacian smooth to make this look even more organic. So that's what I'm going to do now. Make sure that you've got your offset mesh selected, go filters, smoothing, Laplacian smooth again. Now this time when we tick the preview, you can see we're getting these really weird artifacts all around poking out of our mesh. That's because of this option here, cotangent weighting. So we can uncheck that one this time and it'll make all of that go away. So for the number of smoothing steps, again, you can play around with it to your liking. Let's try 50 and see how it looks. That's really nice. So you can see it rounds out all those edges and it also rounds out the joins here. Now one thing to keep in mind here, you can see as we smooth it more and more, it's actually taking away volume from each of these struts. So if I uncheck the preview, you can see it's looking quite a lot thinner now. So if you're wanting to smooth it a lot at this stage, you can compensate for that earlier and increase that offset value when we generate this offset mesh, maybe up to 54 or 55, and then we won't have it thinning out as much. I'm liking the way this is looking at 100, so I'm gonna keep it like that and hit apply and close. And that's it for generating our Voronoi sphere. Now obviously this process can be applied to any model you like. Uh, coming up soon, I'm gonna have a video showing how to do this process while retaining selected areas of detail. Um, but for now, have fun with this, play around with it and let me know what you guys think. To export the mesh as an STL, pretty easy, just select our offset mesh, file and export mesh as, there you can choose to save it as an STL, DAE, OBJ, PLY, anything you like. So I hope you enjoyed that video, everyone. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.